it's my uh, uh, pleasure to uh, teach you about building information modeling uh, as aligning to the uh, functions of management. First, we'll talk about BIM, uh, BIM as a concept. Uh, we talk about the nomenclature, etymology, and definition of BIM. Then we talk about evolution of BIM. This is very important. Uh, at present, what we practice, the framework of BIM is very different from that is, uh, that was during uh, in the initial stages. In our country, uh, we call virtual construction, uh, which is also, people call it as a BIM. We can uh, correlate that to BIM as well. Right, so that's pretty much an important thing that you should know. Then we talk about basic modeling. Uh, probably uh, I'll give you some of the models uh, that we have generated during our value added program. I teach uh, value added program on Autodesk Revit. I've, I've been teaching that for a longer time uh, since 2012 uh, till 17 and 18. I taught uh, them uh, as a value added program. Then I've just introduced that in the course itself. Like probably I teach construction management. Sometimes I teach building uh, drawing also. So I've just incorporated that in the teaching itself. So we don't offer a value order on BIM specifically after that. Right? And then we talk about uh, architectural model, structural model. And now it's BIM is a unified model. It is almost everything put together. Uh, earlier people call it as an architectural BIM, structural BIM, and MEP. MEP is mechanical program. But then now it's a unified model. So we just generally call it as a BIM. All right. And then we'll talk about uh, modern BIM models like sustainability or green BIM. Uh, there's also called micro BIM and macro BIM. So micro BIM is a level, whereas a macro BIM is a township level or something like that. Then we talk about BIM in academic curriculum and BIM in, and its extension. You can probably take a look into that. Some of the research components that will be discussed at the end of this lecture. All right, so without a further ado, let's get started. Overview of BIM. Um, in fact, the first uh, thing that I come across is like uh, generally people have a doubt like uh, the spelling for building information modeling. So generally, uh, BIM concepts were developed by Americans. Uh, so it is generally in American English like building information modeling bearing a single L. But sometimes uh, people from uh, other part of America like they prefer to have a double L in modeling, uh, especially people from the United Kingdom. Uh, though uh, building information modeling got originated, even the nomenclature got originated from the United States, but then people call uh, by their own native. Like uh, if you put modeling with a double L, it's not wrong. Or something like that. Some people just still use that, right? So this is typically a nomenclature. Um, let's define what is BIM. Uh, to define uh, BIM, let's take a look at some classical definitions. Uh, say a Wikipedia definition. So this is what the definition of BIM in 2014 in Wikipedia, which is the process of generating and managing building data. So during its life cycle. So this is a typical example of the term BIM, which is building information modeling. But they say it's just like uh, generating data set uh, from an experiment and it gets managed throughout the life cycle. Later on, they thought of not only generating, but also uh, managing the uh, digital representation of the physical and functional characteristics of the places. Here, they mention as a places as infrastructure. They, they say not only it's generation of data, but also it is the uh, management of the uh, particular building uh, or the asset. They call it in uh, construction management term for asset. How they manage asset throughout this life cycle. So that's the uh, classical definition of uh, um, building information modeling via Wikipedia, and this is in 2017. And in 2020, you see they have just expanded the same uh, thing. Uh, instead of uh, you know building be a process, okay, they mentioned this a process. They also are uh, uh, you know by tools, various tools and technologies. They also talk about various uh, technologies involved in. It is not only a process anymore. It is just like more of an integration of different processes or it is an interrelation, uh, or it is like transdisciplinary, right? So it is not only managing uh, physical assets or functional characteristics, but also look into the technological aspects like the contract aspect and so on. So this is a fragmentation level, right? So this is uh, a current definition, even uh, probably even 2022, we can take a look at video about them. You will see the same definition or similar definition. Right? So this is a comprehensive definition, which is almost, uh, Everything uh, in a pre-construction stage, 
to uh, maintain generate data about a particular uh, construction or the proposed construction so that is basically a building information model right and autodesk was a pioneer uh, software uh, company uh, in fact uh, aec company we call uh, software for aecs like architecture engineering construction companies all right so they have defined it's an intelligent 3d model so so far a uh, bim is just like a process and it can be managed with tools and technologies right so but here they have talked uh, they have taken a look at this intelligent 3d uh, models which is knowledge based models or something like that and then they uh, look into aec uh, aspects like aec professionals use it to get more insights and to plan uh, efficiently design construct and manage the building and construction so this is a typical definition from the autodesk and in fact this is very valid till now Till now, we'll be looking into uh, all these things uh, in a much, uh, you know, fragmented level or something like that. Uh, not to uh, confuse that, BIM also represents building information models, right? So, generally, uh, BIM is abbreviated as building information modeling, but sometimes it's also referred as building information model, in which uh, the model generated out of the process BIM is called the uh, BIM models. Or, uh, I can even call BIM itself like BIM model. Uh, but generally, uh, we don't use this term called uh, models here. Uh, instead, we use generally called assets, uh, building assets, or basically it's a computer file and it is called as assets. Uh, it has the uh, details about the building, but also uh, not only about the construction, but also about the material properties, about the uh, time frame, which is the schedule, about uh, the execution plan and so many different things that you can do in BIM, right? Something like that. But more companies BIM, but I mean, model would be a model, right? So BIM generally represents building information model, but occasionally it is used as building information model. But I just I, I recommend you to use assets, uh, the term called assets instead of model. Okay. So before we get into the actual uh, concept of BIM, let's take a look at how BIM got evolved. And it all happened because of a person, uh, a pioneer American scientist called Evan Edward Sutherland. Uh, during his time, uh, I know his uh, employment uh, at Lincoln Institute MIT, he developed the first generation of CAD program called Sketchpad. Right? So I'll just upload, the, I have uploaded this document, you can take a look at that. So this will take to the uh, YouTube uh, link or something like that. So you can take a look at the videos as well as the uh, you know the white paper of uh, southern land uh, regarding the uh, sketch palette well. and it is called as the gui graphic user interface now uh, gui is a very famous term like uh, many people refer that to you know when they learn a software like first they talk about the view of the software but the concept was developed by uh, even it was in the 1960s right and he was called as father of computer graphics because without his sketchpad, even the animations is not possible. The uh, animation movies, uh, Disney uh, productions and all were not possible without the uh, invention of the sketchpad. So that's why he was called forerunner or the uh, father of computer graphics. Then the term called uh, building model was first developed or first used by Simon Ruffer. Um, it's a very... Uh, Good articles. So I've just provided a link. You can take a look at that. And also, independently, another uh, researcher called Rob, Robert H also have used the term called building model. And then uh, that was during 1986. So probably uh, there was a time where the computers, personal computers, um, being developed and used by the general public. And then uh, the term building model represents the top uh, model of the building, which is the computerized model. Right. Then uh, people uh, talk about building information model itself. So this is the first time during 1992, um, uh, Nedervin and Tolman, uh, Automation and Construction, that's the journal name. So you can refer to that, it's published in 1992. So they are the first people who developed or uh, coined the term called building information model. Right. So that is the uh, foundation of the uh, future development of them. Then uh, Autodesk um, released a white paper on building information modeling. Uh, even at uh, that time, uh, even Bentley, which manufactures or produces uh, other building design softwares, um, probably uh, the famous one is CAD Pro. 
and they even produce softwares for offshore structures and they also have the same concept uh, but in a different name called generative components so instead of building information modeling they have their own name called generative components and parameterism so this is a very important term which means i will explain that during uh, the um, during uh, my uh, you know um, uh, presentation on the uh, work that i have done so i'll just uh, as of now understand what is parameterism which is just uh, you know um, um, change of a model or change of a component uh, adversely affecting the other views of the project or something like that. Say, for example, if you make change uh, in 2D, it also gets reflected automatically in 3D. Whereas in the conventional CAD, you have to go change in all the places that particular component occurs. So that's a cumbersome and takes a lot of time. So PIM has got an ability to do that within no time. So that's what we call parameters. In uh, India, we call virtual design and construction. And even in still, uh, some companies have the name called VDC, which is virtual design. But that is probably BIM, right? And then uh, interoperability uh, and BIM standards, like how it can be operated among different softwares and tools and technology. And uh, people talk about even augmenting that with uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. So this is some of the examples that we have worked in 2014. Uh, integration of the BIM with the, uh, you know, virtual reality. Right. Then we talk about micro BIMs. We talk about uh, green BIMs. We talk about the township, even in particular, um, you know, uh, integration of GIS for a particular uh, area. Then we integrate that to a particular BIM model. Then it becomes a macro BIM. And we also now look into artificial intelligence and machine learning. So all those things can be put under BIM, right? So BIMs. Uh, functionality can be extended further. So the actual functionality of them is limitless. So it's all about how you make use of that. And so, on. so this are the other uh, terms or names given to building information modeling. So initially it was BDS, uh, developed by Churchman in 1975. Then it becomes light by the same person, graphic language for interactive design. Um, then people called us building information management initially. And building knowledge management, then uh, people call it as construction information modeling. Now people say even the term BIM itself is obsolete. Now people does not only manage uh, building, but also the construction, the infrastructure itself. So that's why people call nowadays as construction information modeling, called SIM, or, cons uh, or even they refer this to as civil works in information modeling. Right. So it is pretty much a very wholesome or comprehensive uh, BIM uh, Right. So that's why they have the different name. But then uh, BIM is still exist, like the nomenclature is still exist, and a lot of processes happen. Uh, this is a basic BIM model. Uh, I'll quickly run through it. So um, this is the uh, evolution of the BIM model. Um, first is this conceptual sketching. You remember the architects, they finally, fi initially they sketched the model. That's called sketching, it's called conceptual. That's, I made it a zero because that's not a part of BIM or CAD. Then people talk about line diagrams like Sketchpad and all the 2D CAD. Then that gets extended to 3D CAD or wireframe. At this point, only 2D BIM were developed, like two-dimensional building information model. And when it uh, becomes 3D solid or surface or modeling, uh, 3D BIM has uh, developed, which is a shared model, uh, shared parameters model. Right. So uh, it is also uh, includes loops, which is the uh, non-uniform rational these fine surface. Public surfaces uh, can be modeled with 3D BIM. Uh, if possible, uh, probably in model uh, eight, uh, we can take a look at uh, the uh, you know the uh, conventional modeling versus the uh, modeling using BIM. And one concept is called massing, which can be used to mass or make uh, oblique shaped buildings or something like that, like the wrappings and different types of uh, you know facades or something like that. And 4D, 4D CAD uh, is pretty much an important thing, but it was not very popular because it looks into time frame and the CAD. But then a uh, sophisticated BIM model was developed and any other research after that were just become dormant. And finally, BIM has got as expansion like 4D BIM, which is 3D BIM from schedule and 5D BIM is 4D BIM plus costing. Remember here, I wanted to emphasize that 3D BIM plus scheduling is 4D BIM. And it is not 3D BIM plus costing, it's 4D BIM plus costing. It means 3D BIM scheduling and costing its 5D BIM. 
Many people think that is 3D BIM and costing is 5D. It's not true. So all those things included, it's, it's pretty much important. And six dimensional BIM is sustainability and 7D BIM is on facility management. And 8D BIM, this is the final BIM, which is the uh, available till now. Or uh, we have a clear framework for that as 8D BIM as the safety, but it is not true. We can expand it to further level. People talk about asset management and so many other elements. Uh, so they are expanding the BIM to a greater dimension. That's why we call N dimensional BIM. Now people talk about construction 4.0, uh, which is a very uh, novel concept. Um, probably I can share my lecture video on construction 4.0. And uh, to achieve that, uh, you need to understand about BIM and lean construction and other aspects. Right. So this is uh, kind of an evolution of BIM model. Right. So this is the uh, typical overview of BIM. So I quickly run through it. Uh, in the programming stage, uh, we talk about uh, the conceptual thing. Then we talk about conceptual design, then detailed design, then analysis. We perform structural analysis, energy analysis, and so on. Then documentation, then BIM for fabrication. Not many people realize that BIM for fabrication is a crucial element because not only you model this, you also send it to fabrication to get accurate uh, you know, components or something like that. Then once it is done, we go for construction. It is 4D or 5D. 4D is including time frame, and 5D is 4D plus the costing. Then we talk about construction logistics. Uh, nowadays, people talk about location-based management systems and so on. So how do they make use of the uh, you know, available environment or built environment to uh, create a sustainable construction practice? So it's almost a, a sustainable practice. Then we talk about operational maintenance is actual, uh, you know, as this is all uh, during construction phase. This is once it is constructed, how we make, of, make use of the asphalt drawing as well as the, um, the, the uh, final um, asset and how do they make use of that during its lifetime once that is done you can even go for demolition or you can go for renovation and the process starts right so this is a q model of them so this is a very good uh, you know illustration on the uh, different components or different aspects of them the list of bim softwares this is a very important thing uh, honestly i've used autodesk revit uh, architect then uh, Nemtex uh, all plan. Uh, other than that, uh, currently I'm using Power Project. Uh, this is a pretty new. And some of my students who did a project, the final project, they have done uh, Vico Office, which is also a very good BIM platform. And also, it's a very good linear scheduling platform, right? So, but if you ask me, uh, one software among these things is the number one Autodesk Revit. Uh, you can even use Naviscope for the simulation. Then we will take a look at that later. Right, so Autodesk Revit will be a very important. And in fact, that is free for students. All others are paid. And among this, the Tecla is a very good software, but it is pretty expensive when compared to all other softwares. And earlier, uh, Autodesk comes under. Uh, but now we have a unified model. But even then, architects, they want to have a separate uh, Revit package called Revit Architects. Uh, the reason is that uh, now I have installed 2020 recently. It is 38 GB. So it's 38 GB is a quite a huge software, right? So, but that's a unified model. But if you have, uh, if you are very, uh, for example, only one thing, like if you are architect and want to install only architecture model, so you can even use our uh, architecture. That will be something around uh, 6 to 7 GB or something like that. Then uh, all of us with LT is uh, also pretty much uh, a good thing. Uh, one of the advantages of this is our inbuilt rendering. Uh, the rendering of Autodesk Excel, I mean, Revit Excel is very poor. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Generally, we use uh, additional uh, software called uh, Rhinos or Graph uh, to, you know, render it uh, to a realistic model. But now, if you use Revit LT, it has a powerful rendering engine. You can probably take a look at that. All others are auxiliary softwares or like uh, the mobile app. You don't have to really install uh, this huge software in your laptop or your know, mobile. You can use this uh, to view the uh, rendered model or generated model. And uh, as I told you, uh, Revit uh, is free for uh, three years. A version is free for three years. At the end of three years, it's free and, and, free, uh, and you can install the uh, latest version at that point of time. 
right? So it's free for students. It's called, you can go to autodesk.com education free software. And uh, you can even see there are a lot of softwares. All these things are free. Like you can download it and use it. For that, you need to create an Autodesk account. Once you create an Autodesk account, it, they will send you an email to verify it. Once verification is done, uh, you can go to the free software. Say if you want to go for Revit. So I have used, uh, you know, um, not uh, individual uh, thing, but I've used, you know, a group uh, license. Since I'm an educator, I have to submit my, um, you know, appointment letter and ID card. So they give me uh, for um, the school, I mean the uh, laboratory. Uh, if you are a special school, uh, it was in 2017. Uh, see, the license is like for 1250 devices. I can install up to 1250 devices. But for individual, uh, it will be uh, one license only. One license. And you can install them in your machine or something. And this is the typical model. Uh, generally, this is a model which is very simple. Uh, but uh, I, I've seen people, the students, when they do it, the amount of joy they get is very high. So this is a typical, uh, you know, floor plan. Uh, this is not a, um, you know, very practical model, but it's a computerized model that uh, gives some good amount of understanding of the Revit components. This is I generally give the first lecture or the first workshop on the Revit. So this is the model. So this is elevation. So far, uh, you may not appreciate for the importance of them, but now you feel, you know, that's pretty much a very good. So it's, it's 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 the power of BIM. You have got the 3D model, the perspective view, in the different types of windows and doors. You see, uh, this is a beveled in door, and this is on the wall door, and uh, this is a French door, French window, also uh, kind of a beveled in, beveled out windows. And you can see this is a double door, right? So it's a, a guard rails or hand rails, something like that, and this is a flat roof. And this is a simple model, a simple model, uh, but will give you some good, uh, you know, uh, feel uh, before we get into the complex model, right? Then we talk about architectural model. Uh, before we get into the architectural model, uh, let's take a look at uh, LODs. Um, LOD is a level of details or level, level of development. It is not like um, uh, there's um, there is um, people who do tattooing, right? So they have a meme, right? So it, when the money you pay highest, you have a very realistic tattoo. Uh, when you pay very uh, less, like probably the initial money, then you have a very appropriate, not very detailed tattooing, right? So that's how it is like uh, LOD. In UK, they have got seven LODs, like one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, whereas uh, here, like there's two, five here. But in USA, they have got LOD 100. They don't have this initial abstract concept and also in use concept, but instead they have conceptual design, production, interfacing, then installing in as well. So LOD 100, 200, 300, and there's something called 350, which is uh, a, a development after 300 and 400, and then 500, so all this. And let me give you a um, brief overview. So LOD 100 or LOD 1, is, uh, this is not there in the United uh, States. Uh, this is just an abstract, so this is one. And this is LOD 100, which is the abstract, uh, not abstract, this is something like conceptual. And LOD 200, 300, and so on. And if you see, uh, the level of details required is pretty high in this thing. So the final LOD is the as built during that particular stage itself. And see how detailed this model is. You will compare this and this. From this, we cannot able to make up how this will become. So the depending upon the level of details uh, your client or your organization required, you have to create that. So that's basically the level of uh, detailing or level of quality. So um, we had a fun uh, in creating our own building uh, in terms of uh, uh, three-dimensional model. Uh, we have taken our VIT Chennai, um, our uh, aerial view. This is our entrance. This is admin block, and this is our academic block. And this is a boys hostel and girls hostel and health center. And uh, this is uh, the other building, not ours, right? And the, there are, um, you know, parkings and something like that. There's a football ground and there's an athletic track and something like that. 
and this is a very old picture now the building uh, there are a lot of other buildings have come up like academic this academic block 2 and academic block 3 has come here like it was also very old picture uh, we have uh, tried this uh, you know particular uh, layout uh, and we have generated three models we did that initially in 2d autocad this work was done in 2013 was a very so done by our own students so this are the different master plan and this is a 2d layout and 2d autocad then we have generated all these things in bim right so very old bim i think it's revit 2013 or something very uh, the year is 2014 right so this particular software is 2013 or something and then we talk about uh, you know how uh, we can make use of in different views this entrance yes entrance and different views probably if we rotate the model we take a look at the closer model you can see this model you can even see this particular building so almost fairly similar it's it's almost fairly similar we have taken a look at that in much closer this is the entrance and we have taken this entrance this is a wireframe model uh, before rendering it and then this is our uh, admin block we have created the admin block this is a library and then this is the academic block and the uh, hostel boys hostel then you can take a look at the boys hostel the ramp and this is a multi story building and this is the uh, power house and other thing and this is the uh, tennis um, court region and then this thing we have also mapped that right so and then uh, we had a project like uh, ramco simmons have sponsored a laboratory in our institute um so this is called hilex is a gypsum board uh, partition so they gave this plan then i've just made a 3d model uh, i've just executed this and something like that and this are the things that i've just made it and after that uh, this is during the construction this hilex uh, thing uh, i do have a picture of it like after the construction maybe uh, in a couple of days i go to college then i take a picture of it and then you can see it is as equal to that and i've just made a library building um, i've just made a conceptual library building for an academic institute in our country so this is the proposed model and uh, i have got the computer section i've got the reception our issuing section or magazine racks and double tops something like that like there's a book racks and then uh, our computer systems uh, installed they call it pack no uh, search engine and then uh, this is a classroom um, gallery classrooms and take a close look at that you see how the stepped classrooms and then i also designed uh, the chemistry laboratory is a fuming fuel right so in that so this is also and also i did um, you know precast construction also in fact this work got published in elsevier uh, materials today proceedings so this is the precast um, by model with the different components and then we also talk about construction management this is a layout of a building and uh, how you position the uh, you know uh, the cranes and other related steps and then we talk about uh, families in revit which is called as equal to a block in an autocad so this is a form work a uh, wall form work and then uh, we have got different components sketch model so the diff different models um <coughs> so what we do is we generally convert uh, you know the solid model into a wireframe model then we'll try to position the form work systems uh wall form column form beam form uh, slab form and then with the accessories which is called props and then the supports and then finally uh, it's planned for the entire thing and how it looks like and after this you can give it to navis work for scheduling it sequentially per floor how much time required and something like that and then you can uh, change uh, this is what called parameterism which is you can change one component to the other without disturbing the existing geometry like i want to convert you know initially you see this is see a system form book i want to convert that into a conventional form book like this the same model i will just only replace this and it gets perfectly fit and uh, the mismatch can be found out during a class detection test in navis code 
and these are some of the components that you should really know like uh, it can be used for multifarious analysis and green building uh, we have modeled uh, my own apartment i talked about uh the uh you know energy analysis in fact da1 i showed you a floor plan so this is the floor plan this is a 3d bim of the floor plan and then uh, we performed a uh, sun path analysis like for example sun rises in the east and sets in the west and the latitude based on the latitude and uh, longitude chennai falls in the 13 degree north so this was set 13 degree north and then uh, you can see uh, what will be the implications of energy during that particular time anyone see it's and then we can even uh, export the bim model into a software called ecotech uh, i'm not pretty sure ecotech still exists because it's a very old software but it's very powerful software it forms an envelope or it makes an envelope and it can look into different points uh, in different time in a day you can even do it for a year entire year what will be the response of this particular build asset during that particular time? and uh, you can even set uh, the climate zone right so latitude longitude 13 degree north is chennai so chennai and this is something around 2014 but uh, the software is 2010 and you get a very detailed analysis throughout a year right first january to uh, 13th january and the red represents uh, you know uh, the adaptability index is very low what is this period like uh, ambient tam temperature something like that right so this is a adaptability mode probably uh, till june probably this probably after this is some mediocre and finally it's a very cool temperature right so it's something very much important and the model i developed is uh, very good for chennai that's why the adaptability index is 0.91 so closer to one is pretty good but if you get only 0.4 and 0.3 then you have to really look into the change of orientation the change of positions of the windows and cross ventilation so on and then you can even have a thermal maps like conduction convection solar radiation ventilation you can see ventilation here is pretty good here right and then it gets break down here interzonal thing and something like that and all the things are you know monthly degree days like something like january it is pretty good uh january december and this november it's a very it's pretty pleasant in chennai plus all other things like it, the degree is pretty high the thermal you know the temperature is pretty high and this is a place that we visited during 2018 Uh, it's a place called Solang uh, in Himachal Pradesh where we experienced minus 13 degree uh, Celsius, and I just had uh, you know um, a picture of this. I captured this, uh, so you can even see snow loads on the buildings, something like that. So you can see all those things, and uh, we try uh, developing a model. Say this particular uh, you know building. Uh, say I want to have a pitched roof as well as the flat roof, and we we were like uh, okay, so. Uh, the graphs is missing like uh, we had uh, uh, exposed this to a different temperature and uh, the extreme temperature like minus 30 minus 25 and all and we have seen the response of the building and it was really very successful and in fact we have uh, published a paper in elsevier for whole building uh, energy analysis also uh, during 2014 right some like so that's a um, very good thing. so this is typically you know uh, the implications of building information modeling and then uh, bim uh, earlier were just considered to be a concept in civil engineering but now it's even a job and a career and we go to factory and you can try to do you can ask for bim management and bim managers you can even see uh, this is all pretty hard jobs uh, called bim modelers is a training it's a initial level question and even for builders and other infrastructures they require bim model and the salary is also pretty heavy uh, say you can even say 8 lakhs to 12 lakhs per annum for bim manager and bim head and sometimes they even uh, require freshers uh, so that you can experience if you gain a lot of experience in bim you will be paid very high compared to all other fields of uh, fields in civil engineering even uh, nowadays like uh, many structural engineers they are learning bim so that uh, they get a high salary because structural engineers are paid uh, nominal nominal salary 
But if they have an additional knowledge on BIM, they get a higher salary. So that's what uh, some of our alumni working in MNCs they have just said. And BIM and its extension. So BIM can be really uh, put into 3D printing. Nowadays, 3D printing is a hot topic. People talk about BIM uh, integration with the 3D printing. And digital twins is like making the comprehensive uh, virtual reality models and augmented reality models, as well as the other uh, elements, other computerized models, like cloud computing and all comes under BIM. Then BIM and constructability, just like before construction, people looks into the whole idea of how it will be during the construction. So that when they see, foresee uh, things that might go wrong during construction, they can sort out that in the pre-construction stage itself. So that's why it is called constructability review. And uh, nowadays, all these uh, four terms can be called under construction 4.0. But actually, there isn't any term actually uh, con called construction 4.0. But then uh, this is predominantly used in, uh, as uh, correlated with industry 4.0. Right. So uh, these are the, some of the uh, important things. And this is the model that we have developed in 2015. Um, when uh, a brochure, this is a brochure that is given to people attending the uh, counseling session. So if they have a V gear or if they have a mobile phone with the uh, euphoria, which is the uh, you know, 3D uh, model viewer. Um, they can uh, take a look at our entrance building in the that could be popping out from this uh, magazine. And uh, there are other uh, modeling we have done um, probably want of time, so I'm just just getting it. Right. So some of the definitions. The first is uh, Eastman's, um, um, you know, um, BIM book. This is considered to be the bible for BIM modeling. And then some of my works, uh, which we have uh, done. Uh, this one we have presented in National University of Singapore in 2013. That time BIM was like initial stage, so we could able to do it for uh, homework systems. And we have received a huge appreciation for our work. So you can even see that. Uh, and even click uh, this link to view our papers. And then uh, this also the additional concepts. Uh, there's a magazine, promising magazine called Master Builder. And they invited uh, us for writing uh, an article on BIM. So this is the document. You can take a look at that. And then um, there are uh, code books also available. Uh, it is BS uh, Euronorm standard, ISO 196501, 2018, for BIM, how to generate BIM model. And also BIM standard. This is basically called a uh, BIM standard. All right, so um, that's the end of uh, today's lecture.